Stone soup is an old folk story in which hungry strangers convince the people of a town to each share a small amount of their food in order to make a meal that everyone enjoys, and exists as a moral regarding the value of sharing. In varying traditions, the stone has been replaced with other common inedible objects, and therefore the fable is also known as axe soup, button soup, nail soup, and wood soup. Story Some travelers come to a village, carrying nothing more than an empty cooking pot. Upon their arrival, the villagers are unwilling to share any of their food stores with the hungry travelers. Then the travelers go to a stream and fill the pot with water, drop a large stone in it, and place it over a fire. One of the villagers becomes curious and asks what they are doing. The travelers answer that they are making stone soup, which tastes wonderful and which they would be delighted to share with the villager, although it still needs a little bit of garnish, which they are missing, to improve the flavor. The villager, who anticipates enjoying a share of the soup, does not mind parting with a few carrots, so these are added to the soup. Another villager walks by, inquiring about the pot, and the travelers again mention their stone soup which has not yet reached its full potential. The villager hands them a little bit of seasoning. More and more villagers walk by, each adding another ingredient. Finally, the stone being inedible is removed from the pot, and a delicious and nourishing pot of soup is enjoyed by travelers and villagers alike. Although the travelers have thus tricked the villagers into sharing their food with them, they have successfully transformed it into a tasty and nutritious meal which they share with the donors. Variations The Eastern European variation of the story which is similar to the Northern European rendition is called axe soup. With an axe as the catalyst, in the French, Hungarian and Russian versions of the tale, the travelers are soldiers returning home. In the Hungarian version, a single starving soldier encounters several hardships on his journey back to his homeland. At the end of the story, he sells the rock to the villagers after eating the soup. In Russian tradition, a soldier prepares, "'Axe Kasha". Kasa is Tapora Johann Peter Hebel wrote a German version, Der Schlau Pilgrim", the cunning pilgrim. 1811, in which a wily pilgrim, allegedly on his way to Jerusalem, tricks a hostess step by step into adding rich soup ingredients to his pebble stones, finally leaving the stones uneaten. In Northern European and Scandinavian countries, the story is most commonly known as nail soup, and the main character is typically a tramp looking for food and lodgings, who convinces an old woman that he will make a tasty nail soup for the both of them if she would just add a few ingredients for the garnish. In the Portuguese tradition, the traveller is a monk, and the story takes place around Almerim, Portugal. Nowadays, sopa de pedra is considered a regional dish of Almerim. In the Chinese version, three monks are the ones who place a stone into a pot and boil the soup. Villagers who are curious pass by and add ingredients such as carrots, rice wine, pepper, salt etc. <laughs> Cultural and historical references In the Arne Thompson Uther folktale classification system this tale and set of variants is type 1548. Art, entertainment, and media <laughs> Stone soup — like collaborations There are many examples of projects referencing the «stone soup» story's theme of making something significant by accumulating lots of small contributions. Examples include Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup a computer game which expanded on an abandoned project using contributions from many different coders Stone Soup, a children's literary magazine published by the California-based Children's Art Foundation since 1973 Stone Supercomputer, a computer composed of many small units Adaptations Film The film Fandango 1985 contains a wedding sequence towards the end which builds on the stone soup theme. 
The protagonists need to hold a wedding ceremony, but they lack any funds to do so. Therefore, they set up a folding card table by the main street of a sleepy Texas town, dust it off, and invite passers-by to come to the wedding. As they concoct stories of delinquent caterers and crashed champagne trucks, the friendly townspeople contribute their time and resources, the result being a magical wedding ceremony. Literature William Butler Yeats' play, The Pot of Broth 1904, tells a version of the story in which a clever Irish tramp uses his wits to swindle a shrewish medieval housewife out of her dinner. The story is the basis of Marcia Brown's 1947 children's book, Stone Soup 1947, which features soldiers tricking miserly villages into cooking them a feast. The book was a Caldecott Honor book in 1948 and was read aloud by the captain played by Bob Keeshan on an early episode of Captain Kangaroo in the 1950s, as well as at least once in the 1960s or early 1970s. In 1965, Gordon R. Dixon published a short story called, Soupstone, where a headstrong pilot is sent to solve a problem on a planet under the guise of a highly educated and competent official. He succeeds by pretending to understand everything, but actually merely making the locals apply their already present knowledge and abilities to the task. Stone Soup, 1968, written by Anne McGovern and illustrated by Nola Langner, tells the story of a little old lady and a hungry young man at the door asking for food, and he tricks her into making stone soup. Canadian children's author Aubrey Davis adapted the story to a Jewish context in his book Bone Button Borscht. According to Davis, he wrote the story when he was unable to find a story that he liked for a Hanukkah reading. Barbara Budd's narration of Bone Button Borscht traditionally airs across Canada on CBC Radio 1's As It Happens, on the first day of Hanukkah. John J. Muth's children's book based on the story, also called Stone Soup 2003, is set in China, as is Ying Chang's The Real Story of Stone Soup 2007. Stone Soup 2014, C. A. S. Willing and Paula Rego, Illustrations, Children's Book. Topic music. Shel Silverstein's song, The Wonderful Soup Stone, tells a version of this story. Bobby Bear included the song on his album Lullabies, Legends and Lies, 1973, and Doctor Hook and the Medicine Show included the song on their album Belly Up, 1973. A version of the tale written by Tom Chapin and John Forster appears on Chapin's album Mother Earth, 1990. Topic: Television. Jim Henson's The Storyteller series contains one tale called A Story Short, in which the storyteller himself, played by John Hurt, is the main character. In the beginning, he arrives at a castle where a man is thrown out for begging for food. He proceeds to trick the king's cook into making stone soup. After the people are happily fed, the cook realizes what has happened and pleads with the king to let him boil the storyteller in oil, but the king instead offers a way out—to tell him a story every day for a year instead. The PBS Kids show Between the Lions featured an episode with a version of the story being read. In this version, the strangers were replaced by aliens. The tale was adapted as an episode of the show Hungarian Folktales. A Soviet cartoon based on the Russian variant of the tale was made in 1982. <laughs> Lucky Iron Fish A contemporary twist on ''nail soup'' helps relieve real-world iron deficiency anemia in Cambodia. The Lucky Iron Fish is a cast iron bar in the shape of the tri cantrop fish that many villagers consider lucky. When immersed into a simmering pot of soup, enough of the iron dissolves into the liquid to add the critical amounts of a trace nutrient needed to prevent certain types of anemia. <laughs> <laughs> Military tactics U.S. Army General George S. Patton, Jr. referred to the "'rock soup method' of acquiring resources for attacks in the face of official disapproval by his superiors for offensive operations. 
In the military context, he sent units forward, ostensibly on reconnaissance missions, to later reinforce them when resistance was met, and these missions eventually turned small scale probes into all out attacks. He notably did this during the Battle of Sicily, in the advance on Palermo, and again in the campaign in northwest Europe, notably near Metz when his 3rd U.S. Army was officially halted during Operation Market Garden. Places The Big Pool at Karl Johann Street in Oslo, funded by the steel company Christiania Spigerwerk Christiania Nail Factory", is nicknamed Spikersuppa as a humorous reference to the story, 